Hi, it's your realtor, Brooke, here in the Fredericksburg, Virginia market area. And I just wanted to share this video with a list of best practices for those of you who are looking to compete as a buyer in the current real estate market. So right now it is the middle of May of 2021. And we've had several months of a market where the inventory that's available on the market is not as much as the number of folks who are looking to purchase a home. So with the supply and the demand curve, there is more demand than there is supply. And so as a result, there is a lot of competition for the homes that are on the market. And over the last 12 months in representing seller clients, I have presented over a hundred different offers to clients of mine. And based on what I have seen in the market and what I have seen as winning strategies in the market, I have put together this list of best practices for buyers to follow in the market today. So I wanted to put this video together real quick to give you guys a summary of what those items are that can help you in securing your next home. But before I go into that, first, if you love this information, please hit the subscribe button. If you want up-to-date information on a weekly or daily basis, make sure you click the bell button so you're notified every time we come out with a new video. The real estate market moves in hours and minutes right now, not in months and years. So the more often you can be updated, the more prepared you will be for your position in the real estate market. So this video is strictly for buyers looking to move in today's market environment. Now, I will also do a caveat here, and that is I am a Dave Ramsey endorsed local provider. What that means is, for those of you who know who Dave Ramsey is, he is a financial guru, and he has a specific uh, philosophy when it comes to personal finance. My husband and I personally follow these guidelines. And in my best uh, advice to my clients and in my heart, I always advise them with these uh, Dave Ramsey baby step uh, focused financial planning steps in the back of my mind. Uh, so all of these tips also are in compliance with the Dave Ramsey philosophy of um, the baby steps and the book, the 20, excuse me, the total money makeover. Um, if you are interested in learning more about that, please chat and tell me in the comments below. I'd be happy to send you a copy of the book, the total money makeover. It's made a whole lot of difference in my life, my husband's life, and in many of our clients as well. So let's get into the tips. And I'm going to open my list on my computer so I can see uh, what my tips are and I don't miss a single one. First off, you have your budget. You have your budget of what you want to look for in a home. And my suggestion is if you're looking at homes, you need to look at price points a little bit below what your maximum budget is right now. This is because you need some negotiation room. The majority of homes are selling for more than their listing price or their marketing price. So by looking at homes that are a little bit underneath what your max budget is, that's going to put you in a great position. I recommend 10, 15,000 below uh, what your maximum budget is, and that helps you see uh, what your true budget is in today's market. The second one is to be prepared to offer more than the listing price. In this market, it is competitive. And I have had clients who are strictly, I'm not gonna offer anything more than what the listing price is. And I will say this, in this current market, it might not be the best market for that buyer to participate. And we can wait, and we can wait for the market to be appropriate for that. But right now, you need to be prepared to offer more than the marketing price or the listing price of the property. Number three, you need to financially be prepared to pay all of your buyer closing costs. 
and in our area, Fredericksburg, Virginia, an estimate of closing costs, which is typically high, estimate of your buyer closing costs is about 3% of your purchase price. That does not include your down payment. So this is in addition to your down payment. So be prepared to pay those on your own. In years past, we've negotiated. So the seller pays that for you. But in this current market, that is not very competitive. So have the cash available for your down payment and your own closing costs. Number four, one thing to consider, and this is property dependent and situationally dependent, and I can advise my clients appropriately on this, but be prepared to perform a home inspection just for your own information, or in some instances, waiving the inspection completely. Now, my personal philosophy is you should never purchase a home without doing your own due diligence, but there might be specific situations where the risk is better. It's, it's good to assume that risk because of the benefit that comes out of it. We will have a conversation about those specific, specific situations where that might make sense. Number five, if you're doing a home inspection, do the home inspection right away within three to five days. That way, if you decide, nope, this house is not for me, the seller has the opportunity to put the house back on the market by the next weekend. And that's typically when people are looking at homes is over the weekend. So if you do it really quickly, three to five days after you have an agreement, that makes it a little bit more attractive to a seller. Uh, number six, maybe waiving a radon test. So in our area in Virginia, we do have pockets of radon gas in different areas. My home that I'm sitting in right now, we had high levels of radon and we installed a mitigation system after we moved in. My neighbors, I sold their house a couple years ago, they did not have radon. You don't know where it is, where it's gonna show up, nothing like that. But I will say this, radon is black and white. Either you have it or you do not. And if you have it, in our marketplace, the cost to put in a mitigation system is about one to $2,000. So if you as a buyer are willing to assume that risk, I always advise, yes, test for radon. Yes, test for radon after you buy the home, but be prepared in your budget that you may have to spend a couple thousand dollars to put in a mitigation system if there is radon. That's one thing that will make your offer more attractive to a seller is just not doing a radon test at all as part of the transaction, but absolutely doing a radon test after you own the home is extremely important in our area. And number seven is offering a cash incentive to the seller in the event that the appraised value of the home comes in below the sales price. Now I am not saying to completely waive an appraisal and promise to pay the difference between an appraised value and what the contract price is. What I'm saying is maybe upfront committing a couple thousand dollars above a low appraised value to the seller. I have had clients win offers because they just simply offered $2,000, $5,000, $10,000 above a low appraised value and the seller selected their offer as a result. It speaks highly and in my own personal philosophy, I'm okay with you assuming the risk of paying two or three or 5,000 above a market value of a home in order to get it. I am not in favor of paying 15, 20, 30,000, 80,000 above, I think we would need to move on to a different home in that situation. But having that extra cash to be able to pay above an appraised value speaks volumes to a seller and it doesn't have to be an astronomical amount. Number eight, offer the seller the opportunity to stay in the property after the settlement for a short period of time. One of the hardest things right now is to find the next home but it's hard to find a next home when you have a home to sell. So many of the sellers in today's market are selling their home and their plan is to buy a new home. They have to have that first one under contract before they can even win an offer on the next one. So by offering the seller amount of time to stay in the home after closing, that seller will only move one time and it makes your offer a little bit more attractive to them. Number nine, offer to pay some of the seller's closing costs. So the seller has a lot of closing costs when it comes to selling their home. 
they pay all of the commissions in Virginia, and they also have about 1% of the sales price of just routine closing costs associated with transferring of the home. Taxes, attorney's fees, drawing up the deed, paying off their mortgage, overnighting fees, things like that. So by offering to pay a portion of the seller's closing costs, that could get you in a better position when you're competing against other offers. Number 10, offer to purchase a home warranty that will protect you as a buyer for the first year of your ownership. But I will tell you a little secret. Most of these home warranty companies will also cover the seller between the time when you have a contract and the closing. And that speaks volumes to a seller because we all know we've run into uh, friends who a week before they're closing on their home, the refrigerator dies or the air conditioning goes out and they need to do the repair. So by buying your own warranty, $600, $650, will also cover the seller during that time frame, and that can make your offer a bit more attractive. Number 11, commit a significant earnest money deposit. And my recommendation in this market is 1% of the sales price. Earnest money deposit is also called good faith deposit. And I'll put another video together about what that really is. But what that's saying to the seller is, I'm serious about buying this home. And if I were to back out of purchasing this home without a contingency, this good faith, this earnest money deposit is at risk. If you were to back out of a contract without any contingencies, that earnest money deposit probably will go to the seller. So making it an, a significant amount will help you along the way. Number 12, pay for the inspections of the septic system and the well water. Traditionally in our area, a seller pays for the inspection of the septic system and a seller is paying for the water potability tests that are required for certain loans. And this only applies if your property that you're purchasing has a septic system and well. This does not apply to city or county water and sewer. But by offering to pay for those inspections, you are gonna save the seller about $600. Plus in the state of Virginia, it is a buyer beware state. So a buyer must do their own due diligence. And I think it's only appropriate, especially in today's market for a buyer to pay for those inspections. So if you are purchasing a home that is on acreage, anything over one acre probably will have a septic system and probably will have a well. Put into your budget an additional $600, $750 to pay for the septic inspection and pay for the well inspection on your own. Number 13, a dumpster clause. And this sounds so interesting, but man, it's really important to a lot of people, especially people who are looking to downsize. And that is this. In your offer, you can tell the seller, listen, move everything out of the house that you want to move out and just leave everything at the house that you don't want. Leave the food in the refrigerator. Leave the cleaning supplies in the garage. Leave the extra paint in the basement. Leave the extra furniture you are not going to take with you or the old beat up outdoor patio furniture or whatever, all the personal property you're not going to take. We as the buyer, we're not going to have a problem with that. And we will take care of disposing of that after we purchase the home. For someone who is downsizing, and honestly, it depends on the property, for someone who is probably uh, really neat and organized, but they're downsizing, this might be a great thing for a buyer to offer. Uh, just getting the stuff out of the fridge is a real pain in the neck, to be honest with you. You know, the ketchup, the garlic, the extra things you've had in there for years, uh, getting rid of that stuff, it's not really that hard and it's a good idea. You don't necessarily have to have a dumpster, but maybe running a dumpster, you know, 100 bucks, get a dumpster, get the stuff out, you won the deal. I think it might be a good offer. Number 14, offer a professional cleaning of the seller's home prior to settlement. Or offer a professional cleaning of the home the seller is moving into next. I just presented offers the other day, and that's one of the factors that was offered to my seller, and we had a great conversation about it. 
she does not have to worry about cleaning the house because they are going to take care of a professional cleaning and she can just leave the home. Uh, so that spoke uh, loudly to her. Professional move out cleaning is going to be about $400 to $500. This is not a $100 easy clean thing. This is baseboards, inside appliances, inside the refrigerator, uh, getting the dryer vents vacuumed out, getting the air returns vacuumed out. Um, and depending on the size of the home, it's going to be different prices. But I think it's a great offer because it takes a load off of the seller's shoulders. Number 15, offer to give the seller some time to find their next home. That's called a home of choice contingency. And you may hear HOC or home of choice contingency. This is a contingency where you offer the seller the opportunity to take two or three, four, five, eight weeks. It's up to you and your agent to identify and find their next home. And the risk associated here is what if they don't find their next home, then there is a contingency. But I will tell you this, I have not experienced one single time in my entire nearly 20 year career where the seller has not find, found their next home and has actually enacted the home sale contingency and voided the contract. So giving them the time to find their next place and you just kind of sit on the sidelines. You don't even have to do your inspections, nothing until they find the next home. You just kind of sit there and wait. You can also keep looking for other houses while this is going on, um, but giving them that opportunity can make your offer a lot stronger compared to others. Number 16, include an escalation clause in your offer. An escalation clause is this. I'm making an offer at X price. If there are other offers that are better than my offer, as in a higher price than my offer, then I am willing to up my offer to, I have X price, the other offer is Y, I'd like to up my offer to Y plus $1,000. And I will do that up to a maximum sales price of whatever your maximum sales price is. I will say 50% of all offers being submitted do have an escalation clause attached to it. And most of the time it does come into play. So having an escalator is extremely important. And if you work with me as a buyer, I have a very specific strategic way to use that escalator that will beat out any other offer all day long, up to your maximum. We won't exceed your maximum but it will beat out every other offer all day long. So if you wanna know more about that, get with me and I can advise you and help you along those, uh, that track. Uh, number 17, and this is my last uh, best practices for buyers right now, have your loan officer, if you're using a loan to purchase a home, have your loan officer call the listing agent and talk to them about what makes you stand out financially compared to other agents. Yes, we are submitting a pre-qualification or a pre-approval letter from your lender, but having your loan officer call and speak with the listing agent is extremely, extremely important. One of the things they can share is, Let's say you are offering $5,000 above an appraised value. That loan officer can say to that listing agent, listen, I know they're offering a great offer and I know they've offered to pay 5,000 above the appraised value. And I can tell you, they have the money. They have it sitting there, they are ready to go. So if that becomes an issue, it is a non-issue in this transaction. The loan officer can talk about your credit worthiness. They are fully approved. They are ready to go. All we need is the title work and the appraisal and we're going to closing. Now, this is a hard thing if you're working with institutions that are a little bit larger. So an example would be Navy Federal Credit Union, USAA, uh, Rocket Mortgage. Um, some of those bigger companies are not going to be able to provide this service. I always recommend some local lenders. I have three that I absolutely love and they absolutely will make these phone calls. And the three of them also have great relationships with these other agents. I was in a situation where a buyer was competing 
And the fact that we were using a specific loan officer was one of the reasons why the sellers were actually considering our offer. The listing agent had a great relationship with that loan officer, a great personal relationship, and they felt so comfortable with that loan officer that part of their advice to the seller was we need to consider this because of who that loan officer is. So having that phone conversation is wonderful. And 18 is not really on my list, but uh, me as your buyer's agent, as I'm presenting an offer to a listing agent, I will send them a video. I will send them a text video. I may not be in any makeup. I may be in my backyard working in the garden. And that is when we're sending off your offer. I'm going to send them a text message video introducing myself, talking about you and what makes your offer strong. And the benefit of working with me is I have been in this industry for 20 years and I have never had a bad experience with another agent. And I tend to believe my reputation in the realtor community is a strong one. So with Brooke Miller representing you and sending this video message to a listing agent, I think that speaks highly as well. And they know that the transaction will be taken care of not only professionally but in, and in a timely manner, but it will also be done ethically, morally, and seamlessly. So those are my 17 plus one tips of getting your offer accepted in today's market. I know that's a lot to go through, but I will end on this. If you as a buyer are not able or not willing to do any of these items, then this is just not the market for you. And that's okay. If you need to rent a little bit longer or find a rental home for a year or two, you didn't fail at home purchasing. You're just making a good decision. Purchasing a home is a huge decision. And it's the number one asset you will have in your life. And you don't want to make completely emotional decisions when going forward and doing that. So if you're not able to do these things and you're in a market and you're just like, you know what, I just can't bring myself to pay more than the appraised value, or I just can't bring myself to offer more than the listing price, just hit pause, just be patient, stay where you are, and the market that is appropriate for you will happen. Again, this market happens in hours and minutes right now, and it will change. So just be patient save your money, make good decisions, and you will do very, very well. So if you're interested in learning more about the services I provide to my buyer clients, please click one of the links in the description below and we'd be happy to take care of you. And please be sure to subscribe so you can get all this great information whenever we put it out. I hope you guys have a great, great summer and I hope to work with you. Bye-bye.